Today we talked to Britton Hart about the official announcement of her versus Paige Van Zant at Knuckle Mania. You don't want to miss this. Coming up next. Hey, boss. It's good to be back on your show. I know that we had a few, so it's just exciting. I must be doing something right to be keep coming back, huh? Hey, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming back. We uh, we always love having you on. Uh, and, of course, the, the, the big announcement this past week, right, is uh, you versus Paige for the main event. It finally, you know, it, it came to fruition. You know, we've talked about it several times. This is this is what you wanted. This is what, uh, you know, you guys had the, the face-off, right, in, in, in Miami. And, and it just seemed like that's where everything was kind of pointing to anyway. Um, it, maybe expand on that. Expand... Um, what is the last week, you know, for Britain Hart have been like in terms of, you know, I I mentioned before we started this, probably a lot of people, you're getting a lot of messages, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of attention from a lot of different people. What's it been like for you this past week? Right. Actually, you just really made me think of something. It, it's just been a whirlwind, you know, with all this fight news, you know, the holidays. But I actually think this is the first interview that I've actually got to speak on since the fight has been official. And I mean, I have like hundreds of messages still that I haven't been able to respond to. I'm really working on it. So forgive me if it's taken me a long time, but they're like, oh my gosh, is this, is this legit? Is this a rumor? Because you know, I was fighting her and then it was like someone else was fighting her and then Rachel was put into the picture. So right. I think when it finally came back out that I was fighting her, I think people were kind of like, oh, it's not true. It's still a rumor. It's still not legit. So yeah. now that people are really realizing it's official, I mean, the support has been overwhelming. I mean, it's exactly what I would want. Like I said, it, it, it's a lot better from the first time I fought where people are like, you're going to get murdered to now it's like, hey, we hope you go and murder Paige Manson, which, you know, is going to happen yeah. on February 5th. So it's just, it, it, it's, it's the great it's great to have that type of support. And I mean, there are a few haters and, you know, there are people that are, you know, very mean um, about just, you know, women typically in fight and that's comes with the territory. So I'm not even really worried about that. So like I said, I'm really honestly just, just really focused on making everyone proud who believes in me that, you know, someone who's real, I think that's like the biggest thing on this fight is someone who, you know, I'm, I'm a mom, I work, I have a real job, you know, at the end of the day, I have to, you know, I struggle like everybody else, you know, mm. I bleed like everyone else, but I work hard and I work harder than anyone else. And, and, you know, that is kind of proof that if someone really digs deep and pushes themselves that they can do that too. So it, it's going to be really awesome just to be able to prove this point and that I didn't give up and then I, I stuck with it and I'm not, you know, I might not be undefeated or anything like that, but I'm going to come and make a huge, huge point um, for BKFC and, and kind of lead in the direction on really who's the best in the division and who's going to be the best in the division. Speak on, you mentioned, uh, well, first off, of course, what's, what's the old saying? If you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. Right. So there's also exactly. that, but, but maybe speak on, um, you know, what does it do for your – it's got to be a, a confidence raiser, right, with with all the support you're getting and all the love you're getting from so many people. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really is. And it's like ah, – so I have this crazy story. It's going to sound so stupid, but, I mean, it's really the truth. So I really want to share that with everyone. It's like when I'm – you know, I, everyone says, oh, you got to do it for yourself and you got to be self-driven and self-motivated, which I promise you I am. But it, it's just not the same. It really isn't as having people that, that fill you with that love and the support and the strength. And I really, really am getting that right now. But, like, there is this rope. Um, I try to climb it every day. It's, like, attached to the, to the ceiling in the gym. I go to climb this rope, and there's, you know, no system to, like, harness or, you know, guide rope or even a padded floor. You climb this rope like 40, 50 feet. And if you fall, you might like literally seriously get hurt, like a broken bone or broken. I mean, you could die essentially from climbing yeah. this rope. I'm mm. strong enough to climb it, but I'll get like three fourths of the way up. Right. And mm. I'll just go ahead and get down because I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm slipping. But now 
I can like literally just jump on that rope, climb all the way up to the ceiling, touch the top and go back down and probably do it 10 times. That's the feeling that I have right now from, from these other people giving me this confidence that I can do anything. But I'm like literally just have that, that energy and that push and that drive that I'm not scared anymore. I don't have to worry about falling and breaking my arm on, the, on this rope. I can go climb the rope like it's a piece of cake. And it was something I used to kind of struggle with as far as getting up on that rope. So anyways, just a small analogy and kind of like proof on, you know, my abilities in the gym and in training and, and the strength and just how people give me that confidence. Um, I think you could kind of see it in the Randy fight. Um, but it, it's, it's growing and it's something that I think people can see like with an evolution with me, um, that every fight I'm getting better. Like I haven't plateaued out and there's so much room for me to still to grow. And, um, I don't even want to say change, but transform. Um, and, and I think people are going to be really excited to see that. And I'm really excited to show people that because I think that makes me something rare in a fighter that you, you're going to continue to see growth and and transformation with that. And, and it's because of them. I mean, it's because of everyone pushing me and giving me that drive to be the best version of myself. Um, it seems to be like a really split down the middle. You have people saying, oh, uh, Paige is going to, she's going to get her pretty face heard and beat up and busted up and bare knuckles. She shouldn't go into it. And then you have people saying, oh, well, you know, Britain's going to get killed because Paige was in UFC. She's been a professional fighter for XYZ. Like, it's kind of like there's a weird, there's a weird dichotomy of this, like extremes on both ends, you know? And, and like, how does that, when you read some of this stuff, because I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, I'm sure you've seen some of the comments. What are your thoughts on that? Like, it's people saying, oh, yeah, Paige is going to get murdered or Britain's going to get murdered or this or that. Honestly, I, I, it does kind of piss me off sometimes. I kind of looked at it to be like, oh, they're just ignorant and keyboard warriors. And, you know, I just imagine big old couch potatoes sitting on the couch <laughs> writing all these mean ass things. And I'm just like, you probably look like a fucking potato or like, you know, whatever. But I mean, that's just how I feel. But it, it, the only thing that really pisses me off is when it's not factual. They'll be like, oh, Britain is two and eight boxer. And I'm like, oh, like it. Go look up Box Rec. It's super easy. It, it took the amount of time for you to write your dumbass sentence mm. to go on Box Rec and see that my record is nowhere near two and eight. So that's the stuff that really infuriates me. And then when they say, oh, Paige has been in UFC, well, I mean, look at her record. Honestly, I've had just as many fights, if not more fights, on a professional mm. level than Paige. So it would be quite interesting. Mm. No, it wasn't UFC, but they were still professional boxing matches. They were still a human being in front of me. And mm. it wasn't like, you know, a rehearsed, determined winner. It was me literally fighting to win. So, I mean, I have that. I mean, I just have just as much experience as she does. So, I mean, I think it's a really good matchup. I think that, mm. you know, we both come from extremely different backgrounds, but I think that, you know, we both kind of, um, I mean, I don't think we have the same body build or anything like that, but you know, it, it's going to be a good matchup for sure as experience. That it's not an un, you know, uneven match and where she sucks or I suck. We're both really good female fighters that have really shown we're, we're worth in combat sports, whether you know we look at our records or not. Like we have been in com competition in front of thousands of people. We have had cuts on our face. We've had blood dripping down and we didn't give up or quit. So, I mean, I think that at the very least you should show us some respect that way. Um, but, you know, I, I, I am in you know favor of the people that say I'm going to murder Paige Van Sant. So, <laughs> you know, I am in favor of that. But for, you know, anyone to say, you know, it, it's going to be an easy fight for me and the fact that I, I – I'm going to push myself and train and work my ass off for it. If I wasn't working my ass off for it, it wouldn't be easy. Not anyone can just walk in and eat Paige. You know, she's in the gym every day. She's an elite athlete. She's taking it serious, you know. So the only way I'm making this fight easy is because I'm out there waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning, running three miles every day, you know, going to strength and conditioning, working on my skills, and mentally preparing and dissecting it every day. That's what's making the fight easy for me. So, yes, I am going to essentially murder Paige Manson on February 5th. But, you know, when people say things that are like, that don't deal with the fight like that's when it starts to bother me like this girl's this and this girl's that i mean 
I think that they're all opinions and you kind of got to look at it like that, but you're going to, you know, I do think that we are real athletes and I feel like we're real fighters, but you know, you got to look at the real reason why we fight. I fight to support my family and my dreams. And because this is real for me, you know, she might fight for other reasons, you know, she models and, you know, Mm -hmm. she tries to look the part. And I think, you know, bare knuckle might not be the best fit for her. Um, We're going to find out soon enough but I think that sometimes you know when you're chasing just the looks and the popularity and things like that where I'm somebody else you know like I'm a real person that's really been through this I've really been hit in the face with bare fists my, like whole life you know my, I've been through it you know and I can't say the same for her so you know I'm here that I want it more so I mean that's that's my only like real thing that I have to say against me and her um But other people like the keyboard warriors, you know, and it pisses me off. Honestly, I'm going to go into it. It pisses me off on these other people that are like, oh, oh, well, they're just getting the fight because they're pretty and they're, you know, you know, they can dance and shake their ass in front of the camera. You know, those type of things and those comments piss me off, too, because I'm like, yo, I'm like, again, I'm waking up running in freaking 23 degree weather for three miles that's not shaking my ass that shit's painful i don't fucking like that who <laughs> likes that you know damn I, I, if i could be on the beach like 75 degree weather yeah i would be running but it's it's freezing out there it's cold like yeah. i would actually rather shake my ass like shaking your ass is cardio too but i'm not i'm not doing that <laughs> you know <laughs> Seriously, so, you know, I, I'm sore. My muscles hurt, man. Like, so don't sit there and say that I got this fight because I'm a pretty girl. Like, I have, like, look at this in the camera. Like, man, I got a scar right there. I got scars here. I got scars here. I got a scar here. Like, I'm not, do you think, does it look like I'm worried about being pretty? Like, I have seven, seven, fun fact for Britain Hart, I have seven face lacerations seven stitches in my face from fighting so to hear people say oh they're they're just pretty girls that's 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 insulting to me and like again pull up box rec to anyone who wants to make a freaking comment on social media pull up box rec first and then make your comment because i fought some monsters i fought at 135 i walk around at 120 122 usually like i got on the scale mm-hmm. this morning and i weighed 125 and i was like yes you know, mm. I'm trying to put on weight. I fight at 135. I fought at 130. I fought Ingram Kerwatt, who trains with Roy James Jr. I fought Jamie Mitchell. I fought Alicia Baumgartner. I have fought high-level names in boxing. And I have fought high-level names in bare knuckle. So mm. I really don't want to hear that I just got this fight because I'm pretty. Like, I'm sick of hearing that shit. So you know what? Actually, like I said, I'm not even going to get upset about it because, like, you know, it's just wasted energy. But you asked my feelings and my thoughts mm. on it. So that that's how I feel about it. And I'm just going to go out there on February 5th and, and beat Paige Manson and put all that, you know, split 50. I'm just going to go ahead and put it all over on the Britain Hart side. And then I'm going to continue to move on and beat KFC and beat whoever they put in front of me. I don't ask questions. I'm going to put whoever. It could be the most elite top fighter possible. They're going to put me in front of them, and I'm going to train my ass off to beat them. Like, it doesn't matter. If you put – I don't even care. I'm not even ask names. You put them in front of me, I'm going to train and do whatever it is. Them. That is a fighter, and that is who I am. I don't want to hear anything else that I'm fighting because I'm pretty or shake my ass. I do anything else because I'm not. I'm not none of that. Paige Vincent might be that. So talk about Paige Vincent as, you know, a model and having her, her, her fake boobs and, you know, her, her whatever. Like – talk about that on her but don't put Britain Hart's name and, and don't group me into this category of other girls that got fights just because she's pretty or because she knows so and so or this and that mm-hmm. because honestly it's not true if you look at my Facebook and my stuff I really keep true and loyal followers I don't I might not have 40 50,000 followers but guess what all the people I keep are real they're legit people that have followed me from day one and they mm-hmm. love me and support me for me being real not because I have fake boobs or my you know asses show like they support me for me being real and who I am which sometimes comes off fun goofy silly you know emotional passionate whatever it is I'm a real person at the end of the day that people can follow so mm-hmm. Um, but again, at the, you know, again, I'm a real fighter and I'm not getting this fight 
for any other reason besides I worked hard for it. Hard, hard work. Like, nothing else. So, like, on paper, this is how the fight looks on paper is, you know, you've got the traditional uh, boxing. You're going to keep it at the traditional boxing range. Paige is going to try to get in close, you know, make it dirty, uh, probably go head hunting. Is that how you kind of see the fight going down? Yeah, I, I see it two ways. Um, Honestly, I do. I see it two ways. I see the first way being what you just said. And mm. then um, I actually see it, her being kind of like bouncing and moving. I see her being like, you know, I don't mm. want to say running, but just like that. Elusive. You know, moving and running all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see her I see her coming in like that actually. And I only say that because it's bare knuckle and um, you know, I think that it's gonna be different and it's gonna be kinda you know, she's, she's gonna, gonna be gonna a little hesitant at first. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, so I think her first I feel like her feel out round that's what she's gonna come out as. Um, you know, definitely preparing for both. So, you know, when you have a plan A, there's a plan B and there's always a plan C. So I, I'm good that way. But I do think um, more so that she will come out that way. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody says, but people tell me that about Beck too. That's why I feel like, you know, I can listen to my head, my heart or my gut. And I'm listening sure. my gut feeling is, you know, that she's going to run, you know, run. And move and think that she's better at moving and running than I am but you know that and that's fine but um yeah because people were saying oh Beck's gonna come get you when she comes off that line but you know when mm. I fought Beck it was only the second BKFC fight so right. you know it's still a lot to think about when you have and and Paige Van Sant she's never when she fights MMA you know you're at the opposite ends of the cage same thing with right. boxing at the opposite end when you start this close from each other, I'm telling you, it's it's a crazy ass feeling, and and it takes a couple times to shake it off. It's fucking crazy. Like mm. I, you know, I don't shouldn't probably even give my secrets away actually, but damn, that was the most. I will say that it was the most challenging thing I feel like to overcome moving from, um, you know, boxing or MMA to that. That is a. That is a, like a mental thing and not physically mm. really. Cause I mean, when you fight and spar and the thing, but mentally mm. to start at that position, it is something different. And a lot of people, I don't really think, I mean, Rand Dean actually did a good job of moving forward. I, I give her props for that. Cause she did move forward. So it could mm. happen, but I think that, um, I don't really foresee that happening in my gut. So, uh, I think that, but she is going to, you know, her clinch is going to be what she's the strongest at. You know, she's got a strong base. She's really strong. She deadlifts. She works out real hard. Her strength and conditioning is on point. So I think that she's really going to try to work the clinch and get in close, but that's going to be really, I hope she does that. It's going to be really bad news for her if she tries to do that, but that's, that's where she's going to think she's the best at. And that's where she's going to want to beat me at. Well, and like you said, it's, it's different. You know, like the people that come in, I, and it's different on both ends. I, I don't know how many times, and it gets so old, you, you know, trying to explain to people, you know, you have people who come from the boxing world, whether they're fans or fighters or not, and they think it's as simple as, oh, it's just boxing without gloves. And it's like, well, no. And then you got people from the MMA world, and it's like, oh, well, yeah, because I'm an MMA, I'm going to. I can fucking clinch all day. Like I'm going to be, you know, unstoppable in the clinch, but it's like, well, not exactly. You know, it's, it's, right. it's, it's a combination. Like it's, it's different. You know, it's, it's bare knuckle. It's not, I, that one thing I have learned because we've seen examples of both sides is it's, it's, I would even say, Maybe, maybe when you when when I first started covering the sport, I would probably say some of the experience went to MMA people simply because a lot of the fight happens on the inside. Like I I might have said that, but after I I don't think that's the case. I think I I think it's a matter of you know heart wins bare knuckle, one hundred percent. I think I think if you've got somebody with heart versus yeah. somebody with skill. I think the person with heart is going to win eight out of ten times. You know, a person can get a great shot. And, I mean, you look know, at that Marcel happy. Stanton Joey fight. Right. Right. 
you know? Yeah, and, no, you're and, right. And, and, well, that's, and Joey is a perfect example because that's kind of how, that's Joey's style, his ability to yeah. take shots and get hit and keep pressing forward. You know, he, he kind of wants you to, you know, blow out your gas tank a little bit and, and kind of exhaust yourself. And, you know, during that fight, exactly what happened, you know, people, and it's it's no knock on Marcel Stamps at all. Not at all. But, like, you know, that fight went exactly how I thought. I thought Marcel was going to come out hard and heavy, uh, hot and heavy the first couple rounds, which is what he did. You know, he came out hot and heavy, throwing shots, uh, going for the head hunt. And I knew that Joey would, you know, run the third round. He would start to get warmed up. He would go ahead and, you know, then he would start with his offense. And that's what happened. Um, people can say, well, if Marceau wouldn't have broke his hands. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, yeah, but, I, I mean, Marceau will even say, I mean, he looks so great. He looks awesome coming out there. But, you know, and he'll, he'll even say it. And, he, he, you know, he's great about that, too. He's like, you know, he had more heart. He's like, I'll give it to him. Like, yeah. specifically, the reason why he won that fight is he had more heart to overcome and take, hmm. you know, you know, he was not, he wasn't winning. He wasn't ahead those three rounds, but when that happened, he hung yeah. in there cause he had more heart and, and yeah. heart is what's going to win. But I might take it. I'm going to steal your quote after we get off here and be like, heart wins bare knuckle. That's all, you know, that's all you H say. H A R T. <laughs> right. Exactly. Always, always. So. so, and you know what's funny about that though? I, I want to say something real quick because yeah. it's hilarious. And I don't think I've said this yet in, in an interview, but people will be like, oh, Britain, you know, they're going to clinch, right? Britain, they're, they're going to clinch. You better want to stay away from that clinch. Like right. you're a boxer, don't clinch. And I'm like, hmm. Okay. So I have had three bare knuckle fights now and, and each and every single bare knuckle, which is why I just posted a clip on my social media um of me and Beck, me and christine and me and randine mm. and in all three of those little clips you'll see me in the clinch and it's like does it look like i have a i mean i could you know definitely i could be more efficient and be better and definitely dominate better in the clinch but i'm definitely not mm. losing in the clinch i know how to clinch um i know how to be in clinch with people with fighters so you know when people are like britain the clinch the clinch and i'm like man this isn't like i'm a vet now like i've been in three bare knuckle fights and i've clinched every single time and and, and it's it's not you know no i mean it, it's something you have to watch out for and definitely be mindful of but it's not something that i can't get out of or can't deal with and i think that that's what makes me super dangerous and i love boxing and that's been, you know boxing is definitely my background but in boxing you know that was always my my criticism and feedback in boxing that you know i was a, you know a brawler and a little bit you know my style is really really relevant and i think great fit for bare knuckle um boxing so and having that clinch is something that doesn't bother me because again my past and and before boxing and even during boxing and all my you know anyways but i've i've been in street fights I, i've fought on the street where there unfortunately isn't a referee i mean I, I love keeping in a sport and competition and being regulated but i've been there before where i've had to clinch and do whatever it takes just to survive so i i'm really with the clinch you know again game on if that's what your you know your game plan is to beat me is because i i, I don't have know how to clinch or get out of the clinch then you know, you rock that game plan, I guess, because it's just going to benefit me. Let me ask you this. So you, you mentioned, you know, your fight with Beck. What's what's the difference between the Britain Hart then Britain Hart now? You know, because I guess it's similar situations, right? You're fighting, you're fighting a name from the UFC. You're kind of put into that spotlight. Um, what are the difference between the Britain Hart then and the Britain Hart now? Man, I know it's amazing. It's really, it, it, it's unreal, honestly, because more than likely we're going to be in the main event. And if you don't recall, um, with me and Beck Rawlings, we were the main event. So it was pretty yeah. cool, you know, two, two women um, headlining at the top as the main event. So I, I do predict this um, be in the same situation. Um, maybe the co-main event, but I mean, I would be surprised. I think it's going to be the main event. But, um, you know, so it's kind of like, wow, I get a redo. But what is the difference? Um, between you know Britain Hart then and now is exactly what kind of my name 
had, you know, kind of implies, you know, back then, you know, it was just, you know, Britain Hart, and then it was 2.0, and mm. then it was 3.0. So I'm mm. like really transforming. I think people are really seeing that and grasping that. And, you know, when I fought Beck, it was, you know, in 2018, it was definitely my first bare knuckle. I mm. had a lot of other things going on at the time. And I think like, I kind of describe it to people as me being like, lo- like, and like, I know who I am, but I'm just like lost, you know, like, I'm like, man, I don't, you know, and being lost is the worst feeling. It really is. Being lost mm. is a horrible feeling. And Amen. I was really lost. I was, you know, I, I was, I was super lost, man. You know, when I trained for that Beck Rawlings fight, you know, I, I trained myself like 75% of the time. I went to YMCA every freaking day. I ran every day. You know, I, I was by myself and listened to music every day. And I begged people. I had, you know, and Noe co- coached me and he met me like maybe three times a week and we would work out for 45 minutes, three times a week. He was the best. He was the only person I really had that was at least committed to that time. And then at 45 minutes, he gave me the best pad work ever. We had great pad work. And I was so thankful for that. But that's all I had. Other than that, it was me calling gyms and begging and being like, hey, can I come to your gym and and get some work? Can I spar your people? But it was like all the way around. Like, man, it was like, again, worst feeling being lost. But in my heart, I knew this is what I signed up for. I have to give it 100%. And who cares? You know, it doesn't matter that I don't have a gym that I'm at every day. It doesn't matter that I don't have, you know, a coach that's dedicated to me 24-7. I'm going to be happy with what I have and um, make it work. And that's all I really focused on. But at the end of the day, I was still lost, you know, um, and, and was, but I wasn't gonna let that get in the way, but you know, you can't, it was still an issue and still there. So after that fight, a lot of people were like, Britain, if you were only this, if you were in the camp, if you were with this coach, if you were here, if you were there, you would have won that fight easily. And I think I let it get in my head, like get in my head bad. So I've been on this like wild goose chase literally since the back fight on just trying to find a place where I belong and and where I'm going to do that. And I kind of gave that up for the Christine fight. I really trusted and was like, all right, I'm going to stay at this gym. I'm going to, whatever my coach says, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do exactly what he says. And I'm going to follow the textbook written what Britain should do. And in that process, I lost myself even more because I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I wasn't seeing me for a fighter. I was giving total control to someone else. And, and that didn't make me, you know, I, I did the best again, what I, what Britain Hart does. I did the best with the situation I had, but it wasn't really me. It was still the lost, you know, the still lost girl that, you know, comes up. And so after that, I was like, I mean, like I said, I still, I went here, you'll see me in Florida, you see me in Philly, you know, you see me out in Vegas, you know, I go all these different places, but it's like, I get touched and motivated by one small aspect and I fall in love with it and I keep it and and it keeps me going. But it's like, I kind of had to like, really look at myself and be like, you know what, I think that you're, the fact that you're lost, don't look at it as it, you're lost. It's the fact that you're covering up as many areas and places as you can be to make a difference. And mm. and when you start seeing and appreciating that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, it's kind of like, wow, I had everything right in front of me this whole time. It wasn't that I had to go out and search and find it. I've had it this whole time and it, it's been right in here. And whoever's around me and whatever the situation is, as long as I'm being true and here and following that, everything else is going to work itself out. So that's what you saw for the Randine fight. In the Randine fight, mm-hmm. I wasn't worried about, oh, my God, where am I going to train? Who's going to be my coach? Who's going to do this? I just went down the road to, you know, to a coach that I've had. And, you know, I said, hey, this is what it is. Can you be there with me? You know, we've been through so much. I've known you for four years. I would love it if you're there. And he's like, hell, yeah. And we did it. And, you know. I didn't even know I was really fighting Randine until like her, I think it was like two weeks. Um, and, and I just went in there just saying, you know what, this is what it's supposed to be. I work hard every day. I was teaching kids boxing at the time. And again, they were giving me so much, you know, motivation and encouraging stuff that I was like, I- I'm right where I need to be. And that's how I felt. And when I went into that fight, you saw that someone who was found, someone who knew what she was doing, the purpose, and, and back on that, like, you know, on, on the on a map that's, 
you know, got a path and, and she's following it, not a bunch of side trails and, you know, um, pit stops and stuff like that. Like I, I knew where I was on the map and, uh, it's a way better feeling. Like I said, fighting through that feeling of being lost for like, it's like four or five years is exhausting and, and it was something that a journey that I needed to take to to be who I am right now and I'm you know again I'm mm. super thankful for all the pit stops I had to make because it, it's really it's it's shown me who I want to be and more importantly who I don't want to be and you know so those mm. people that come into my life and it's a good lesson for everyone in fighting definitely in fighting people come in as a blessing or a lesson and and there's no losses don't look at losing but you either learn something or you get a blessing from it. And I have blessings all over from the things I've done as well as lessons. And I, I'll say this, and I think I even mentioned it last time we talked. Uh, I, I think we we interviewed you like a, c a couple of years ago, or maybe it was like right after the Beck fight. I, I can't remember the timing, but just I, I, I can remember, you know, your – your demeanor and kind of like your vibe then to now and I, you know wow you know I, I i think a lot of people see that a lot of people can see like there's definitely uh like you you've changed things you know for the better and you tell like you it just it just it radiates from you you know you can just tell like your whole mentality is just it's just way more positive and it's just it's just it just comes out of you um so I, I just I, I just kind of wanted to share that too. So so you know you can even go back if if people want to go see it, you know go back and and watch it. It's uh it's it's interesting to see the progression, you know that that you've made and the changes you you've cry. made, you know and and a hundred percent right because it, it's sometimes you kind of have to go through the shit to be able to you know. Uh, make those changes and see those changes, right? Because sometimes, like you said, when you're lost, like that's one of the worst fucking feelings in the world when you feel like you don't belong or you feel like you don't know where you're going. You don't feel like, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it feels like shit, you know? I, I think a lot of people can I, identify with that, you know? A lot of people can identify with that feeling and, and uh, to, to know that, you know, somebody like you has, you're you're coming out on the other side of it. You know, you've been through it. You've been through the worst of the worst kind of thing. You've been through the shit, and now you're coming out on the other side. You know, with this with this huge fight and and just all this spotlight, and you're still maintaining your, you know, you're you're still maintaining. Um, like I said, you're 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 not gonna you're not you're not big leaking people. You know, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna do that to people. And, and I think people see it. You know, I, I think you, you nailed it right on the head when, when you said, you know, earlier that uh, you, you're you're just, you go to work, you're a mom, you, you know, you wake up and go to the gym every day. You don't have this entourage follow you with cameras and, you know, you don't shake your ass, <laughs> you know, you don't do all that. It, it, it's, it, I, a lot of people can identify with it, so um Real quick, because we have kept you extremely long, and I apologize for that. But I guess, cert last but certainly not least, like what's what was your New Year's resolution? <laughs> oh, my New Year's resolution, man, uh, to go in and beat Paige Van Sant on February fifth. It's the only thing that's on my mind. Oh, I All got right. tunnel vision for that. All right. Well, uh, I tell you what. Oh, shout outs real quick. Anybody you want to shout out? You know, some of the sponsors. Anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. You again. Thank you for having me on your show and all, all your awesome media clips that you leak out. They're always on point and, and my favorite. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart that they're the best. So I love love seeing you and talking to you. Um, definitely, um, you know, my friends and family at home. My, you know, my son who has a birthday actually tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and say happy 11th birthday to him on here. So hopefully he, he always knows that I'm thinking of him and he's my why. So um, my sponsors that are really coming up for me right now, they're awesome. Veteran Farms, I have to give them a huge thank you. Be Lit Organic, HK um, USA, I'm part of their family now, Hit 5. Um, the family is really growing. Um, Richie L. Tuck and Sons always been there from the beginning. Afton Service Center, um, they're going to be there too. 
uh, Women of the Carolina Fight Life. There's some exciting big news coming up with them, and they're always amazing. So um, Lux Boxing Gym, uh, Contenders Clothing, Knuckleheads Boxing and MMA. Um, like I said, the family, the family is really growing, and, and most of the people that I just named off have been there from day one. Um, so I really appreciate you and the people that are just joining in. I know why they're joining in and it's because they see, you know, see that fire and see that passion. So I'm just so thankful to have them and, and help me grow and continue to shine and, and to transform and, and be the best I can. So big, huge shout out to them and everything and big things to come. 100%. Well, like I said, we appreciate, as always, we appreciate your time and I uh, thank you very much and good luck to you, man. This is uh I, I'm I'm pumped. I'm excited for you. I I mean I mean really. I, I'm I'm truly excited for you. So, uh, good luck to you, and uh, we'll definitely see you out there because uh, we're making the trip out there too. Yeah. So, we'll see. You. I'm sure we'll chat it up. Uh, other than that, that's all I got. Of course, I'll be there. Fireworks. <laughs>